we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started this video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hello once again guys, I'm Ranger Rob and welcome to Easy Street. You can catch Easy Street on Good Talk Radio, uh, Spreaker, lots of other platforms. And uh, become part of our family. So on this show, it's a only half hour show. And it also is an audio version that goes up to Good Talk Radio and Spreaker. And so uh, I try to not show a lot of visuals because it's really hard for people that are just listening to the audio. <laughs> so, makes sense? I thought it did. So anyway, uh, today's show is kind of different. I want to take a different angle of something. I want to talk about caregiving, which I've talked about before. But what I really want to talk about, and sorry about the wind, is uh, spouses of caregivers. What I mean is like, let's say you're married and your mother, uh, your uh, wife's mother uh, needs to be taken care of, so your family takes care of that. Uh, but it's not your mother, it's your wife's mother, or your father, or her father. Anyway, so there's two things I want to, well, first of all, let me ask you, are you a caregiver? Are you taking care of a uh, uh, aged mom or dad, uh, either uh, at home or assisted living? And some people say, oh, well, they're in assisted living. They're not really taking care of them. Not true. Um, the first question is, is, uh, how many times have you talked into a friend? How many times are you talking to a relative? Um, and you're having a general conversation and they say, oh yes, we're taking care of Fred's mom or Sarah's dad or someone like that. Uh, either they're living with them or they're uh, uh, in assisted living and they're supporting that. Uh, a lot of them are executors of the of, a, of their estates, and the only reason why they are the executor of their estates is because their parents picked that particular sibling as the one that could probably do the job the best. So, uh, however. I want to make this video about the spouses of those caregivers. They're the silent ones. But before I go any farther than that, um, caregivers, how many times have you had a conversation and a friend or an acquaintance says, oh yeah, we take care of my mom, uh, or we're taking care of my mom, or I'm taking care of our dad, or we're taking care of Fred's dad, whatever. Have you ever heard them, people say that? And you just nod and go, oh, okay. Well, right there, right there and then, stop everything, and and and, and stop in that per and tell that person, oh my gosh, you're amazing. Really, I think about that. They casually say, yeah. Uh, Joe's mom is in assisted living, and we've been supporting them. And and uh, taking care of them and, and uh, for example when someone's in assisted living does not mean that everything's done for them. Uh, doctor's appointments they'll get done by the executor or whoever's taking care of the caregiver. Uh, paying bills, uh, working out issues, uh, notifying family, um, taking care of insurance problems, taking care of uh, personal things like getting their teeth done and dental work, uh, med uh, medications, uh, sometimes their furniture, uh, issues they might be having at the assisted living. Um, it just, it, the list goes on and on. It's a 24-7 job. 
And that's an assisted living. That's not talking about if they're living in the same home with them. Then it's even more. Uh, their laundry, their food. Uh, even in assisted living, uh, caregivers will still go to the store and, and um, get things for their mother or father uh, that are kind of specialized items that may not be available at the assisted living that they're at. That goes on a lot. Like uh, Sherry's mother loves uh, ginger ale and we always try to make sure and get ginger ale and she has a certain kind of ice cream she likes. And we always make sure and go out and get ice cream. And uh, sometimes we'll have to go get personal things like adult diapers and stuff like that. And uh, it's just part of how it is. So yeah. When she's here, we help and assist with showers and uh, baths uh, when she's visiting. Um, it's stuff that a lot of people don't think about. So, the, so before I go into the spouses, if you know of anyone who is a caregiver, stop this video right now, pick up the phone, call them up and say, you're amazing. Tell me what you're going through. Because um, their life has been turned upside down. Totally upside down. Every aspect of that caregiver's life has been turned upside down. We're talking about their daily lives, their children, their husband or, or wife, all of it's affected. Their household, their finances. Um, even if there's a state or there's money, there's still money. It just, you just do things. You don't think anything of it. This is not a video of complaining. This is about caregivers and caregivers' spouses. And the reason I want to bring up spouses is it's a weird position for the husband or wife to be in. And I'll even say partner. Because, well, uh, I can bring only our example in where, like, for example, the person that passed away was her father, which was a close friend of mine. And uh, for many years, for a lifetime, 40 years, I've been married to his daughter. Uh, we're, we knew each other really well, and he knew that me and Sherry were taking over the estate and that we would take care of it correctly. And um, even conversations I had with him, I like, you're going to, you know, he said, oh, my kids and all the people will be just great. I said, no, there'll be money involved. <laughs> there'll be greed. It never goes smooth. And, uh, but th that's the problem when you're an outsider looking in, but you're not really an outsider. And that's the problem with the being the spouse part of things. You don't mind me sitting in my barn, do you? Um, <laughs> it's weird because, uh, if there's like more than one sibling involved, um, they're suspicious of you or they don't consider you part of the family. Yet you're married to the person whose life is devoted to taking care of uh, the aging parent. My finances, which are Sherry's finances, are affected. Our relationship is affected. Our equipment our resources are affected. How can you say the spouse isn't part of this? We have a family, and these are the same things that other spouses have. We have our kids. Our kids are affected. And sometimes they'll put, well, the grandkids have um, more authority over this than the spouse of the actual daughter and it's like no this affects every part of your life when this happens so when the time comes when that 
time came for us. It was a big swallow of, oh my God, we're now responsible for this person. We're now responsible to manage their accounts. We're now responsible to manage their investments. We're now responsible for taking care of their medical bills. We're now responsible for their uh, safety. Both of us, not just the wife or not just the husband. So if you hear a spouse saying they're taking care of my wife's mother or father, it's the same as saying it was your own parent. Because the commitment that that spouse made, one to his wife and now to their parents, is amazing. It's as important as t saying the vows to in a wedding. That spouse will take ridicule. That spouse will be sometimes not trusted. That spouse may... Uh, uh, be hugging the wife over tears a lot because of things that are said to her that are not that are hurtful because of ignorance. And and as a husband, I can tell you that the highest priority in my life is my wife and my children. When one of those are under attack or ridiculed or misled or lied to or taken out through my kids on something I will be their worst enemy why cuz it's my family just because the husband or wife might be the executor of an account does not give anybody the privilege to abuse that other that person and their family is going to protect them So, uh, what I want to bring up is this is almost probably shocking as, I'm just using an example for emotions. If someone, you've been married for a year and one, and one year, one of them says, uh, I had an affair. Think of all the feelings that would go through your head. Well, think about, we're going to take care of an 82-year-old uh, who really needs help with everything for the rest of their life, which could be a short period of time, could be a long period of time, and its conditions could even get worse. And all the other siblings will sit stand by and not help at all. But they have our opinion. So what is the spouse supposed to do? Do we just stand by and watch people hurt your your wife or your husband? Do you just turn the other cheek and be quiet? <laughs> Do you take up drinking? <laughs> <laughs> and sorry if you hear any wind, I apologize. It's, I don't have my studio yet. Sorry, it drives me crazy. I wish I had my studio. However, this spouse has sacrificed his company my studio because I can't set one up in this house because we're leaving everything for other siblings to look at do they care they don't give a crap all they want is their stuff do some of those siblings even care about their asking about their mother or, or father in a lot of cases I've talked to more than one person has ever had to go through this. And there's always that one or two children that are very helpful. Sometimes it's more the neighbor than their own kids. However, those same people will attack you. Will tell you what you're doing wrong. Yet never lay a finger to help. And it makes you angry.
For example, in our family, I've had both of my children gone through, let's say, po politics to try to get to us. Luckily, why they would think my children are stupid or something is beyond me because they're brilliant. They'll hold their ground. The husband and the wife of a caregiver have a whole new level of morals and ethics and stand behind those that need help. And so somehow along the way, when one caregiver, one person that's passed and you're the caregiver, some reason, a lot of the siblings consider that person not around anymore. And they just want stuff. And it's like, <laughs> wait, first of all, don't you think you ought to maybe even talk to your mom or father that's still alive and quit assuming that whatever is left here is come and get it? So, like in our case, there's a lot of stuff still here. We want them to go through a few things. But really, the most ethical thing to do is sell all this extra stuff, get the funds, and put back into the wife's, of the care, person we're caregiving for, account. Because it's hers now. The person that passed away is no longer their stuff. It's now the wife's stuff, or vice versa. If the wife had things, it's now in the care of or legally the husband stuff and the executor or the caregiver is serving the person who needs the caregiving <laughs> this is really complicated and uh, you have to stand your ground for what they wi what their wishes are even if other family members have a different idea That makes sense? So spouses of caregivers. First of all, if a spouse of a caregiver says, yeah, our family's taking care of my wife's dad, stop everything. Stop the conversation and say, hey, you're amazing. Totally amazing what you're doing because not everybody can do it it could be depending on ages may still have their own kids maybe they have special needs kids and they don't with COVID going on can you imagine what this is like oh no they all, all that gets forget, forgotten yet all the things that we have to do gets forgotten although we have more hoops to go through we make one mistake, oh, they'll be all over our ass. Not once do those ones on the back, out background give thanks to the caregiver or actually call the person we're caregiving and say, how are you doing today? But they don't have any trouble asking for something they want. Like I said, they, they assume that the other care person is dead or something. And it's like, no. <laughs> you need to realize, you need to take, call your, you know, support your mom or your dad. And a lot of times, the spouse has to zip their lip, even though they're just as involved as the actual caregiver. So if anybody tells you caregiving's easy or a piece of cake or you're lucky you're gonna get stuff. The moral and ethical people we're making sure that everybody gets their stuff and we're just making sure they can get it. And if we're lucky they might let us have something because they won't give a crap. 
they'll just take and take and take. And never will they ask, gee, Rob's wife, did you get anything? And all we can say is, yeah, we've been taking care of your mom. We've been getting the thank yous. So, uh, caregiving is much more complex than just taking care of the person itself. Usually the caregiver is also someone that's probably taking care of their estates. Some estates are good, some estates are not so good, and some don't have any estate, and they're dealing with uh, Medicare and things like that, very complex. Trying to give their, their parents the best uh, living lifestyle possible at their particular age. It's so complex. And there's always an organization out there. There's always somebody out there trying to take advantage of them. And it could even be family. And as far as on my watch and on Sherry's watch, that ain't going to happen. And most good caregivers are amazingly smart and don't ever underestimate them. They will protect their mothers or fathers with everything they got and they will not let you talk, take advantage of them or them or actually the people doing the caregiving. So what can I say other than it's frustrating to be a spouse of a caregiver. It's frustrating because you give everything you got, everything I own, all my time, my relationship with my wife, everything I do has to consider the person we're caregiving for. This, to go on a fishing trip, to go on vacation, to have to go uh, transport the, uh, them from one state to another because we moved them up to Oregon. The sacrifices of my animals had them be put in a kennel or taking care of our personal stuff. We're living out of boxes just to protect siblings that don't care. I'm doing that, and they're not even my siblings. I have others who'll do anything for us. And believe me, it's a small number. My grandkids, my, my own kids, are amazing. They have done uh, more than su more than most of the siblings because they really love the grandmother and grandfather. My kids, you remember us, the siblings that don't care, that, that doesn't matter about us? My family has sacrificed everything. So does any spouse of a caregiver. We sacrifice everything we do, everything we buy. We even consider like if we were to buy a car. Well, can we pick up grandma and put her wheelchair in the back? I guess we better not buy a sports car. Everything we do. Oh, she's gonna be over in two weeks. Let's make sure her favorite shampoo's here. And uh, certain things like that. Her favorite food's in the house when she comes to visit. Maybe we are today, instead of us having a day at a picnic with our own family, we got to pick up grandma and go take her out somewhere and let her get out of the assisted living and live another day without a family gathering of our own. And that's okay. But it's not okay when you're constantly getting attacked. It's not okay. If you don't recognize that the spouse is just as much a part of this as the wife or husband or partner I'll say too. So this is food for thought, things you may not even considered when you know someone's a caregiver. And what the spouses have to go through. Their whole life is impacted 
for as long as that person needs help. Every day of every hour, it's us that gets the phone call and goes, oh no, I hope everything's okay. When we get that phone call that has grandma's name on it or, the, or assisted living uh, support people call us. I mean, for example, tomorrow, we were get, uh, we got her into a new building and they cannot figure out how to hook up her phone because we have to use a repeater. It's a speech to text phone. And uh, I set it up for them. It's simple. And a young technician can't figure it out. Cannot believe it. I'm 59 for goodness sakes. And these young kids can't figure out with the instructions in their hands. They couldn't do it. They finally said, we'll give you special permission, gear you up, and let you go in Monday. I'm just the spouse, remember? I'm the one that doesn't matter. But I'm the one that's got to suit up, go in there, and nobody deserves to be in assisted living without a phone. I don't care if it's my mother or not. Nobody deserves that. And a good husband and wife are supportive of that that's how they feel about things it may not even be their mother but they care so much that they'll do anything it takes to one satisfy the wife or husband and also make the mother-in-law or father-in-law happy and live a, a good life just like the house we bought from them we paid was not given to us we bought it but we bought it with the intent that Hey, while she's still around, she can enjoy her flowers. Come over and use her soaking tub. Go pick out flowers and put in the yard that she used to do. She can't maintain them. She can only watch from a window. But, and then all of her stuff now is protected. While her siblings can come go get their stuff. So I didn't buy a house, I bought a thrift center. <laughs> It'll change later. I have to live with that every day. I have to see my boxes that I can't open because I gotta wait for other people to go through stuff. And do they freaking care? <laughs> no, they won't. Will they thank us? No, they won't. Will they be a continued pain in the butt? Yes, they will. <laughs> But we continue doing everything and anything we can to make her mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, comfortable, happy, and feel like she has purpose. I guess we're evil for that, eh? Anyway, I thought this was an interesting subject. I'm hoping that some of the feelings and things that I brought out to other spouses that have care are part of caregivers can know that they can rant <laughs> so feel free to leave comments below please be professional please be understanding and think through what you're going to comment about before you make a stupid statement put some thought behind what we're talking about here and put yourself in their shoes what would happen if your life was totally changed because you had to take care of your mother or father for the rest of, your, of their lives. There's so much you don't know that is going to change when that happens. Everything's going to change. Even the relationships you have with all your other siblings or siblings you know of your wife will totally change because greed and money does evil things to some people including their kids. The true um, nature of people will either shine or black out as soon as a crisis like this happens. So guys, have a great day. Leave your comments below. Please share or like this video. Tell me if you're a caregiver, if you know of a caregiver. And if you know of a caregiver, go give them a big hug. They need it. And don't be surprised that they start crying. Because they don't get enough thanks. So guys, thanks for listening to Easy Street. Until next time, bye for now. 
Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.